all right guys uh welcome to this video where i'll be diving into a little more detail about the components of reinforcement learning so we'll start with the environment so like we already learned the environment is like uh is the world that an agent lives in right so if you are if you are a stock trader the stock market is your world right so an agent that is learning how to trade uh stocks its world is the stock market right let's just put it that way so and this world is represented like you know with computers we can only represent information as data right so it's represented as data so the world of this uh, agent is the data and so uh for an environment we've already seen that an environment will usually produce a state right so it produces a state a state uh in some definition is a complete description of an environment right this doesn't apply to all applications but this term is often used in reinforcement learning and we can say that a state so for example if you are trading for a year one and you want to and, and you're trading on a daily basis so one day could be like the state right so your information that you have on that day is the state of that day right and then we have an observation right an observation is like uh, the, the, we can define it as a partial observation of uh, a state or of an environment so uh, in this example we can say that all right if you're trading today you have information about today but you can never have all the information imagine all the news sources all the, the the events that are taking place in the world that leads up to what happens in the market so all of that is like the state we can call that the state but the observation is the price is of of that state is just a partial observation right so even if we have new sources those are partial observation those are like partial observation of of the environment and so we call that an observation and so uh, to give an example of what a state is you know if you play chess at every state in a chess game you can see every possible move that you can take so we can say that that is a state so you can you have all the information about that environment at that particular time that is what we would call a state and to distinguish that from um, an observation let's say you are in a stock market you will never have all the information about this uh, this environment at a particular time so at a particular time maybe you only see the price so that's an observation maybe you see the price the volume of trading that's an observation because you can never know all the information that is taking place at that time for you to make a decision so we have uh, in an environment we have a state and we have an observation all right so moving forward we also have um, another component in reinforcement learning is an agent so an agent is our guy this is the guy that makes decisions for us right and this is the guy that we want to learn how to make decisions for us so this agent in an environment there are certain things that an agent can do right and those are actions so there are certain actions that it, uh, an agent can take and that depends that depends on the environment and it depends on how we define what actions it can take and there are two different types of actions right so uh let's uh, so we have an action space actually we have a, an action space which is the set of possible actions that an agent can take right and then so in an environment there are only certain things you can do think of it like um your your today if you are trading what what are the different things that you can do you can buy you can sell you can buy a certain percentage of a share or you can sell a certain percentage right of a stock and so those are the different actions you can take so we have uh, discrete actions which are a finite number of possible actions 
we can say okay if you buy sell or hold this are discrete zero one or negative one right or continuous actions which means you can take any action let's say you're buying one percent of a store two percent five percent those are continuous right so for example a discrete action you can buy you can sell or you can hold we can represent it as discrete numbers one zero negative one right or a continuous action where you can decide like all right what i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to buy uh 50.1 of the stock or i'm going to sell 1.1 of the stock right so those will that will be a continuous action so this had uh, in a, in an environment we need to define what kind of actions right what kind of actions is it a discrete or continuous so whenever you go into an environment you need to check what kind of action can this agent take are they discrete or continuous or are they mixed so in some environments you can take both discrete and continuous actions and then let's look at um, the reward which is one of the most important uh, uh, aspects of reinforcement learning like we already mentioned is the central idea in reinforcement learning and so uh, what is a reward so the reward is the information that the agent gets to know how it's behaving so if you if, if you're if the agent is doing well the reward is what will tell it like all right boy like this is this actions you're taking like yeah they're good actions or if it's the action is taking is making you lose money then you're going the reward is going to be the information that you will tell the agent like bro you need to change you need to you need to step up you need to make some more money you 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 you're messing up right so that's the reward and then um so in a reward environment so remember we have an environment right so in our environment we have a, you remember in reinforcement learning we have a a sequential loop right so we have a sequential loop and let's look at what a reward is right so let's say we start our loop at t equals to one which is our observation right so we get an observation and then what do we do when we see that observation we need to take an action so let's say we take an action to buy right when we buy we are going to get a reward right and uh we get a reward of zero why do we get this reward of zero because it's based on the future state so we can see that uh the next state is still 22k so we get a reward of zero which means we bought and the price didn't change so we 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 didn't make money we didn't lose money which means the price stays the same and we get a reward of zero so that action wasn't bad wasn't good and then we move to the next time step t2 and the next time step we have the the price 22k and then we're going to take an action let's say we take the action sell and then we're going to get a reward why do we get this reward so we sold the stock and the stock moved to 21k which means it went down and selling means we are predicting that it's going to go down so it did what we expected and we got a reward of plus one and then we're going to go to the next state right we're going to go to the next time step three so at three we buy the the stock moves to 20k eh, so we lost money because we bought and it went down so we get negative one so this loop continues to uh to the net to the time step t equals to nine right so at t equals to nine we have 25k our action we buy and what what do you think is going to be our reward pause for a second what is going to be our reward here we don't know the reward why because at t equals to nine we don't know the future time step so we cannot calculate the reward right so we don't know if the stock went up or down so we don't know what reward to give so this could be like the term so t equals to nine is a terminal state right that's the last step and so we can see how we calculate our reward at every time step and so at the end of this step we have we have the cumulative reward right so the, the so the cumulative reward will be the sum of all the rewards from all these actions right 
So, and it's going to tell us how well we performed. So, uh, the, the the mathematical formula to compute the cumulative reward is is uh, this. So this is the cumulative, and this is the trajectory, right? So it tells us the reward at the first step plus the reward at the second step, third step till the last step, right? So we can sum it up like uh, mathematically like this, and then uh, T is the uh, sequence of states and actions. So just take T to be like this sequence, right? And the rewards are simply these rewards. T equals to R1, R2, R3, F4 until the end, right? And then we have, so sometimes we have a discounted reward. So discounted reward is sometimes we give a discount to some rewards. Uh, we'll explain this in detail in, in a future lecture. But now, um, so discounted reward, we have a discount rate, which tells us how much discount we need to give a reward, right? So. And so the final, uh, if we use discounted rewards, our final reward is going to be discounted cumulative reward. So this is just the cumulative reward with no discount. So discounted cumulative reward means we've added a discount rate for our rewards, right? We're going to explain uh, that in further detail in a future video. And so, uh, still looking at explaining what the reward is like we've seen what the discounted cumulative reward is and what the cumulative reward is and so we can see like um let's say this is our environment it gives us the sequence we have our sequential loop state action reward and future state we get these loops and so at time step one let's say our discount is some value right this is a discount is uh, calculated from the formula. You can see at T1 is uh, the discount rate raised to the power zero. At T9, the discount rate raised to the power eight, right? Is from the mathematical formula that we can see here, right? And then we have the, the reward. So for example, for our sequence, you can see the rewards here. These are the rewards that the agent got. So if we calculate that we can use this to calculate the cumulative reward. So what's going to be the cumulative reward, right? So if you calculate the cumulative reward, we'll see that our agent actually lost one unit, right, from our bed. So if that's the summation, right? And then if we look at the discounted reward, let's say we multiply, let's say our discount is equal to one and we multiply that by the reward, right, to get the discounted reward. So we get the discounted reward for every time step. And then we sum them up to get the discounted cumulative reward. So if we if we if we do that, uh, let's say our discount is one, which means we multiply every reward by just one. We don't want to make that complex. But there are situations where we need to uh, get a different a different value will work better to for to inform our agent. So we get a discounted cumulative reward of negative one. It's negative one because we choose the discount to be one, which means there's no discount, right? Yeah. And so this is um, how we can explain uh, the components of, uh, of reinforcement learning. So we've seen uh, the environment that produces states or, 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 or observations. And then we've seen the different actions, w which are either discrete or continuous and we've seen the reward which can be cumulative or discounted cumulative reward so these are the fundamental components of reinforcement learning and i hope you've learned something and see you in the next video